We all know the names of Western explorers like Marco Polo, Ferdinand Magellan, Vasco da Gama, Christopher Columbus, and others who have put their names in the history of ocean and sea exploration. We are told about Marco Polo and his adventures in China, Vasco da Gama and his success in establishing a sea route from Europe to India through Africa's Cape of Good Hope, Columbus and how he discovered America, etc. But have you ever been told about the Eastern explorers who made history before the others did? One of the Eastern figures that is of great interest in the world of sea travelers and explorers is the Muslim admiral from China, Zhang A. A was an explorer who reportedly reached America before Columbus did. Zhonga was born to a Muslim family in the region of Yunnan during the Ming Dynasty of China in 1371. His birth name was Maha. In China, they used Ma as a short name for Muhammad. His family claimed to be a descendant of a Mongolian governor in Yunnan or from King Muhammad of Bukhara. Raised as a Muslim, Maha studied the teachings of Islam and memorized the Quran at an early age. His father and his grandfather completed their pilgrimage to Mecca. They had a great impact on his education, and it's under their influence that the young Ma'a would develop an intense curiosity about the outside world. The travels his grandfather and father undertook would contribute a lot to his education. Aside from his religious education, Ma'a was raised in a family where speaking Arabic and Chinese was something evident. That means that both languages were his mother tongue. He wanted to know everything about the countries that were geographically located westward of China. He studied their languages, religions, traditions, history, and geography. When Ma'a was 10 years old, the army of the Ming Dynasty captured him during their military raids in Yunnan. They took him to Nanjing and there he did his military training. After that, they took him to Beijing to serve Zhu Di, the prince of Yan and the fourth son of the founding emperor of the Ming Dynasty. Thanks to his abilities, loyalty, honesty, integrity, and brilliance, Ma'a became the best friend and the personal bodyguard of the young prince. It was during this time and period that Ma'a's intelligence, wisdom, and leadership abilities became visible. After all the campaigns and battles he led and fought on the side of Prince Judi for four years, Ma'a became the most powerful military commander in all of China. When Prince Judi became the new emperor of the Ming Dynasty, he decided to reward all the officers and officials who had supported him. Ma'a was one of them. In 1404, the new emperor awarded him as the supreme commander of the Imperial Household Agency. Judi decided also to change the name of Ma and gave him his new title, Zhang. It was Judi's way to thank him for everything he did and as a symbol of the imperial honor. From that moment, Ma'a became Zhonga. The political discussions Zhang A had with Zhu Di, the military experiences he undertook, his connections with the people of knowledge, trading with merchants, and all the abilities he developed in his childhood will only open new doors and horizons to him, exploring the world. The emperor chose him as the ideal commander for the great voyages westward. After he became the most powerful commander in China, he became China's greatest maritime explorer. Admiral Zhang A became his new title. Zhonga prepared everything very carefully before he accomplished his mission as an explorer. He made some detailed studies about existing naval charts, astro-navigation, eastern and western calendars, astronomy, geography, marine sciences, piloting, shipbuilding, and repair. From 1405 to 1433, Zhang A led seven great maritime expeditions. He crossed the great oceans and seas several times, from the South China Sea to the east coast of Africa, Passing through the Indian Ocean, the Persian Gulf, and the Red Sea, he visited more than 30 Asian and African countries and learned a lot about their cultures and beliefs. He reportedly completed his pilgrimage to Mecca during one of his expeditions. Zhonga was not the only Muslim on those expeditions. Advisors and translators who traveled with him were just like him, Chinese Muslims. The first fleet Zhonga commanded included 27,870 men on 317 ships, including sailors, clerks, interpreters, soldiers, artisans, doctors, and meteorologists. He was on his way to Vietnam, Sri Lanka, the Philippines, Java, and Sumatra. The ships were up to 440 feet long and 186 feet wide, 
capable of carrying more than a thousand passengers as well as a massive amount of cargo with products like porcelain, gold and silver, cotton, copper and silk goods. Those ships were many times the size of Columbus's ships that passed across the Atlantic and several times larger than any other wooden ship ever recorded in history. The most spectacular and important voyage of Zhang A was his fourth one with his 30,000 men, which was to Arabia through Omoz, Aden, and the Red Sea. When he arrived in Arabia, 19 countries sent ambassadors to bulk Zhang A's ships with gifts for Emperor Judi. Thereafter, he traveled to the east coast of Africa and possibly reached Mozambique. After the death of Emperor Judi in 1424, the new Emperor Ongxi seized immediately all the maritime expeditions. China became a self-isolated country during the coming hundred years. Zhonga was appointed as the port commander in Nankin and received orders to disband his army. Zhonga chose with the support of Shuande, who had succeeded Ongxi, to bring life to his expeditions. On his seventh and last travel in 1433 at the age of 62, Zhang A revisited the Persian Gulf, the Red Sea, and Africa. It is also believed that Zhang A reached America and Australia during one of his trips before the Italian explorer and navigator Christopher Columbus did. The Chinese explorer also reached the east coast of Africa and sailed from the Cape of Good Hope to the Cape Verde Islands before Marco Polo did. Every time Zhang A reached a country, he sailed back to China with exotic products such as ivory, camels, gold, and other goods. When the Chinese reached the east coast of Africa, they found people who built houses of brick. The Chinese also found African animals like lions, ghost spotted leopards, and ostriches, which were six or seven feet tall, even more amazing. The most exciting thing that Zhang A ever brought back to the emperor's court was a giraffe. The animal came from today's Somalia. When the giraffe arrived in 1415, the emperor himself went to the palace gate to receive it as well as the celestial horse that is the zebra and the celestial stag, the oryx. The palace officials offered congratulations and bowed before these heavenly animals. When Zhang A came back from his seventh voyage in 1433, he was 62 years old. He had accomplished much for China, spreading the glory of the Middle Kingdom to many countries that now sent tributes and ambassadors to the court. Though he died soon afterward, his exploits had won him fame. However, a new Ming emperor had come to the throne. His court officials criticized Zhang's achievements, complaining about their great expense. China was now fighting another barbarian enemy on its western borders and needed to devote its resources to that struggle. When a court favorite wanted to continue Zhang's voyages, it was turned down. To make sure, the court officials destroyed the records that Zhang had kept. Thus, China abandoned its overseas voyages. It was a crucial decision, for just at that time, Portugal was beginning to send its ships down the west coast of Africa. In the centuries that followed, European explorers would sail to all parts of the world. They would establish colonies in Africa, America, and finally in the nations of East Asia. China would suffer because it had turned its back on exploration. Zhang A had started the process that might have led the Middle Kingdom to greater glory. Unfortunately, the rulers of the Ming dynasty refused to build on his success.